The Black Atlantic, um, this is a very broad and uh, complex uh, issue, and uh, it could take hours to uh, deal with all the um, aspects involved. Uh, so I, um, uh, we want to focus here on the Black Atlantic and Germany. Now, um, when we talk about the Black Atlantic, Germany is certainly not the first country that comes to our minds. However, uh, German history uh, has been intertwined with the Black Atlantic for a very long time. Um, and that dates back to the, um, seven, to the 18th and even the 17th century, because this interrelatedness uh, began with Germany's often denied involvement in the transatlantic trade in enslaved Africans. German financiers, missionaries, and writers made profit from, morally responded to, and fictionalized their encounters with slavery in the Americas. The German textile industry partly relied on the triangular trade between Africa, the Americas, uh, and Europe. Ships brought goods, produced by slave labor, such as cotton, sugar, and tobacco to Europe, including Germany. And travel narratives helped lay the ideological justification for slavery. Uh, these are circumstances which have only gradually entered research works in Germany, in recent years, that is and are still not being recognized in a public discourse. On the other hand, according to Paul Gilroy, who coined the term, the Black Atlantic is also a trope for circulation of ideas and activists, as well as cultural and political artifacts. And already before the Second World War, this was true to a considerable extent, not only for Great Britain and France, but also for Germany. And even before that, for example, I don't know if you have heard about that, but um, um, German expat expatriates uh, in the United States were in involved in the American Civil War, and um, these were mainly um, people who had left Germany um, after the 1848 revolution, and these, uh, these German soldiers, interestingly enough, fought on both sides, but most of them were on the side of the Union troops because they had fled um, a system in Germany where they themselves had longed for freedom, and then when they were confronted with the system of slavery in America, in the United States, that is, they decided to fight for uh, the rights of the oppressed people over there, too. So this interrelatedness has always, um, at times, um, existed. Um, in the late 19th century, philosophy and sociology, a W.E.B. Du Bois critique of um, Hegel's thought uh, no, sorry, um, of um, Hegel's derogatory uh, notion of um, African people and the African continent and the concept of uh, racist thoughts about race in German thought um, was very important. Even beca or because also, on the other hand, uh, since Du Bois' studies in Europe, also influenced his ideas on the concept of race in the Americas. And then the construction of race becomes a core element in Du Bois' analysis and is meanwhile an essential element in German post-colonial research. If we jump to the Weimar Republic, there culturally black music, and you opened this panel with black music, um, in particular jazz, uh, boomed and many African-American artists found exile in Germany, a circumstance that has later been depicted in African-American literature. 
In general, African Americans brought new cultural developments uh, to Germany. Well, you all have um, heard, if you talk about the Weimar Republic, um, you uh, all have heard about the famous uh, dancer Josephine Baker, for example, or um, other um, jazz musicians who toured um, Germany, and uh, they were very welcomed here, and that was a totally new experience um, for, um, well, for, for the majority of, of German people. Although one must say this was overshadowed, by stereotypes, racist ideologies, and reprisals against black people from the former German colonies. Nonetheless, there was a vibrant black culture which was abruptly and violently ended by the Nazi seizure of power. So some of these black people who were in Germany um, fled to France then and uh, went back uh, to other parts of the world and of course to the United States. After World War II, fascist attitudes continued to have an effect on people's minds. Germany considered itself as an exclusively white, ethnically homogeneous society. Black descendants of the Allied troops, like myself, were stigmatized and marginalized. Hundreds of black children were sent to, sometimes even segregated, children's homes, or sometimes even forcibly, adopted abroad, especially to the United States. But not only. Some were adopted to, to Denmark, um, even though uh, politicians in the German parliament at that time argued that Germany was not good for them because uh, the climate was too cold for them. But Denmark, of course, um, was a nice place to send them then. Um, in the 1950s and early 1970s, the civil rights movement in the US and its struggle against racial inequality gained recognition also in Germany. Uh, this was fueled by the visits of, in particular by the visits of Martin Luther King Jr. and um, Angela Davis to both parts of Germany. Even though one must say here that those officials uh, by whom these two uh, icons of the civil rights movement were invited had uh, different uh, m motives, but we will hear about that, I assume, later on. Um, at the same time, there were solidarity campaigns organized in West Germany by the students' movement, but nonetheless, black people in Germany and their situation remained unnoticed. They still were not for them majority of Germans, they still were non-existent. Although there have been individual black activists since the 1970s, an independent movement of black Germans and black people in Germany did not emerge until the mid-1980s. And again, transatlantic influences were of significant importance for this development. A pivotal role in the formation of the new black movement in Germany was assumed by the African-American poet and activist Audre Lorde. And um, let me add here personally that I still feel very, very privileged to have been a personal friend of her since ever she came to Berlin in 1984 until her death in 1992. Lord came to the Free University as a guest lecturer, and among her students were also black women, some black German women. She specifically uh, thought out others, and uh, that sometimes lead, led to, um, well, um, even comic uh, situations, because uh, Audrey would walk um, the Berlin streets, and whenever she saw um, a person that looked um, one way or the other, um, African or, or, or black or whatever, she uh, addressed them immediately and wanted to invite them to several gatherings. And um, well, for, for those who were approached that way in the streets, um, this sometimes um, well, was a big surprise, <laughs> I should say. Um, so she specifically thought out um, black people and she encouraged them sorry, to 
tell their stories. And one of the book, one of the results was a book showing our colors, Afro-German women speak out. And this groundbreaking work was a cornerstone in the emergence of the new black movement in Germany. And I want to add here and take this opportunity to mention that one of the editors, the historian and activist Katharina Ogunteuer, was awarded the Federal Cross of Merit just a few days ago. So congratulations from here to Katharina Ogunteuer. Uh, showing our colors became a, a catalyst, um, <coughs> sorry, in particular for the black women's movement uh, in Germany and for the foundation of ADEFRA, Afro-German women, today black women in Germany. Women whose fathers had come to Germany as soldiers from the US during and after the World, World War II, but also women with one African parent who had grown up in the GDR played a leading role. At the same time, the ISD was founded and um, in the early 1990s, uh, the latter organized, among other events, a youth exchange program with, U with the uh, US uh, where they also met icons of the civil rights movement like Jesse Jackson um, and you all may be familiar with his name. He was a companion of Dr. Uh, King, and uh, he even ran for president uh, once in the United States. ADEFRA uh, was dedicated early on to the international and intersectional struggle of women against racism and other forms of oppression, and established connections with Afro-diasporic communities in Europe and in the US. In 1991, they collaborated with different organizations in Germany and abroad to organize the fifth cross-cultural international Black Women Summer Institute. In August that year, this was held for three weeks in Frankfurt am Main, in Bielefeld, and here in Berlin, and established an ongoing exchange with Black women worldwide. This initiative was also the brainchild of Audre Lorde who remained um, strongly associated with the black movements in Germany until her death. Since then, a variety of black communities has developed in Germany, embodying the diversity of black experiences and black lives in this country, focusing on different social, political, and cultural priorities. Whereas many of the founders and early members of the ISD had a German and an African-American background, the organization has quickly developed into a diverse diasporic community. The younger generations often having an African and, German, and a German parent. In later years, also African, African-American, and Afro-British expatriates have joined as well as children of immigrants from the continent. Today, there are several black diasporic organizations. And this is why I talk about black communities and not one black community in Germany. And initiatives, foundations, and magazines, some with a political focus against violence and discrimination, some dedicated to intersectionality or cultural issues, some embracing Afrocentric or Afro-European issues. This present diversity of black individuals and communities in Germany has also led to discourses on different and changing identities. On different and changing identities on intersectionality, differences, and also we should not issue this on contradictions within the black communities, but also to the forging of new coalitions. As a literary scholar, I want to mention, of course, that a flourishing body of, his, of um, of historical, political, and literary publications um, emerged in recent years. And these works deal with black history in Germany, the legacy of German colonialism, the influence of black history and literature of and in the Americas, and Germany's involvement in the transatlantic trade, 
in enslaved people from Africa. Research work also explores cultural influences of black Americans in the 19th and 20th centuries, for example, just like uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, whom I mentioned at the beginning. The diversity, this diversity calls to attention a new definitions of what it means to be black in Germany today. In his landmark research about changing identities in Britain, Paul Gilroy writes in the Black Atlantic, and I quote here um, to end with, quote, striving to be both European and black requires some specific forms of double consciousness. Colors support a special rhetoric that has grown to be associated with a language of nationality and national belonging, as well as the languages of race and ethnic identities. It is in this context that also in Germany, changing black identities must be constantly negotiated anew. We must recognize our commonalities and our differences. If we want to build effective coalitions between black communities in Germany, in Europe, and in transatlantic connections. Thank you very much for your attention.